Okay, so uh, I got to see Lord of the Rings for the first time. You know, the franchise, everybody, the franchise of all franchises. I, when it comes to world building, you, you gotta give them credit, cause like, wow. It was basically, you know what it reminded me of? It was like, if you ever read the books, um, you ever played the games, not really watch the show, but like if you've ever played Witcher 3, you would understand like world building. 100% if they made a Lord of the Rings game like this, it would be epic because just how much lore is in it, which you could appreciate. I love that. Um, okay, so Frodo, he has to, he has his ring and it's poisoning him and it's corrupting his ass. Cool. But that doesn't make him the protagonist. He's like the one who just like takes all the crap. Sam is the one who's like, yo, I'm gonna do everything. So like you just sit there and have a good time and then like watch me save the day and become more badass as I go through while you just continue to suck throughout. And I was like, okay. So now that we're on the same page, Sam, great, Frodo, ooh. It is very rare for you to find a film that loves itself as much as Lord of the Rings loves itself. And like, that's a testament, it's not a negative. I know a lot of times you can see like, the film is self-indulgent. Yeah, this, this series is self-indulgent. And I think we could use a little bit more of that. Cause they just whew, knocked it out of the park when it comes to just like everybody caring. However, holy shit, is the dialogue just really cheesy. I felt bad if you're lactose intolerant. I am, and it was a damn shame. But that being said, if you're gonna have cheese, you better commit to the damn cheese. And they committed to that cheese. The only time it really, really sucks is when they're just not committing and they're judging their characters because they think it's stupid. None of the actors thought any of the cheesy lines they were saying were stupid, so you just became more and more emotionally invested. Cool, kudos to you. Now, where does Peter Jackson who just like everybody considers the god of directors when it, because of this franchise, where, where did he really shine? The battles. Oh my god. If you ever wanted to understand how to make a battle, like a, a medieval battle, Peter Jackson is the person to tell you how to do it. Just take whatever he did and just copy it. And the reason the battles were good was not because they were long, it's not because they were cool, anything like that, even though they were. It was actually just because of how grounded they were in strategy. Like, it's so often where these big giant battles are just scaled so large, and then you're just like, cool, fight scene, fight scene, fight scene. Oh, cool, dialogue. Oh no, somebody dies. And then fight scene, fight scene, fight scene. And oh, slash, cut to slash, cut to slash. No, this one was like, cool, they're coming up in ladders. Great, Legolas is like, whoa, I'ma shoot these things down, cool. Then they come up with bigger ladders. Oh great, this isn't working. We're gonna come in through the side. Cool, get your men and block that gate. Awesome, but they're gonna break, break through it. Cool, have the guys from the top of the tower to shoot them from the side. Boom, just like, just well thought out strategy after another that just flow in terms of actual battle strategy. Not like it's ridiculously complicated in that it's, it makes sense. It's not just fighting for the sake of fighting. It was just this franchise really shows what you're made of. When you combine CGI to scale up accordingly, but then you don't weigh everything on just giant CGI because it doesn't look good. They ground it in practical effects and that's usually, if you talk to an artist, a visual effects artist or anything like that, they will tell you that the best way to do these battles, the best way to do anything is to do practical effects and CGI. And like, that's how you gotta do it. Because honestly, if we're gonna be like really honest, like I bet you for the time it was amazing, but the CGI looks really weird right now. And like for anybody who's like, no, it doesn't, it looks so good. No, you're just a fanboy. Um, Cause it doesn't. It looks so weird. You can 100% tell where the real people are and where the CGI is. But like nothing against them. That was a CGI for the time. I almost very rarely make fun of people for CGI because you gotta know that CGI is constantly progressing. And that was it. And they, they that's what they could do. So you have this like CGI progressing, super cool, awesome. 
but it was just grounded in practical effects and practical effects it's like it just stands the test of time because they perfected it in my opinion so early so like that looked amazing like those orcs look amazing everything about it looks amazing everybody looks fantastic and it's even just like the things like the hairstyle the way they did like the hobbits hairstyles is just so good everything is great they were super grounded in that and it was just you could just appreciate that so they're going through this series here's the thing oh my god there is so much detail in everything i swear to god if you accidentally sneeze you will just like miss something that will come up later on and will be a big deal. I found myself asking, and I watched the extended versions. Um, I was watching it with a friend who was super into the franchise, and I found myself asking a question every single second. I was just like, wait, why did they do that? Why did they do that? Why did they do that? And you could be saying, well, why aren't you paying attention? I bet you you've seen the franchise like 10 times at least. Uh, this is my first time genuinely going through the franchise, and it was a lot. The difference between this and something like a Harry Potter is Harry Potter, like its narrative plot is actually relatively basic. So you have this basic ass plot of like this wizard, oh I'm a wizard now, oh my god there's a main bad guy, cool, gotta go through this, oh there's horcruxes, cool, 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 I'm gonna go through it, I'm gonna zap people, oh my god my scar burns, cool. Everything is like very set through it, they're going through the thing, they're going through the years. This one is like, Mmm, Saruman, and ooh, Middle Earth, and boom, boom, boom. Oh, you said that? Oh, that's why the trees are doing this. Why do the orcs come here? Oh, because of that. Why are only these elves coming in? Oh, I don't know. But da 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 It's just constantly throughout, every second is another detail that has to do with the genuine flow of the plot. But I can tell that if you actually go through and watch the details, you would be appreciative of how enriching the narrative is. But on a first casual time, like if you just watch it for a casual, like on a casual basis, you watched it for the first time, like I understand why like 90% of like the casual audience people like have a tr have trouble following Lord of the Rings. Like if you like asked your parents to watch Lord of the Rings, unless they were really into nerd culture, probably would struggle with these films. I love all of the fantasy genre and like I can appreciate it. It was just a lot. Now we have these main characters. So we have Aragorn, we have Legolas, we have Gimli, we have Pippin and Hemley, I think his name is Henry, whatever it was, the other Hobbit, and then you have Sam. Um, so you have these guys. I, nothing, nothing against this. I was just surprised at how sexually charged everyone was towards one another. The amount of, of erotic tension between every human being, or sorry, not human being, every single person in the main crew was just enormous. I mean, everyone's telling me Sam and Frodo are best friends. I'm sorry, they're lovers. You know it, I know it, we know it. And the only thing that I can tell from that that just feels really problematic about it is that Sam's just like, he's so much more invested in their romantic relationship than Frodo is. I mean, Frodo barely gives him anything. Why is he calling him Mr. Frodo if he's his best friend? Why are you saying you're his Sam? I'm sorry, if, if Frodo and Sam wasn't an allegory for a master-slave relationship, I don't know what is, because that's what it was. We have Aragorn and Legolas. I'm sorry, but every time they touched each other's shoulders, you knew what happened behind the scenes. You understood what was going on. I mean, Legolas literally could not stop making sex faces at people. That's all he knew. He knew how to do a battle face and a sex face. And they were often very overlapping. The only person who wasn't erotically charged was Gimli, and that was because he was too busy stroking his own spear axe thing um, the whole time. So, that, which is fine, because he was cool. Um, kudos to him. So we got that. Oh yeah, and then Aragorn, he just like, look in my beautiful eyes while I look into your soul and we love each other in a bonding way. So there was that. It was a lot of just, mmm, mmm. I mean, that's the definition of an orgy porgy. Um, then you have all these side characters, which kudos to them to making the subplots and the side plots really matter towards the end result of the actual storyline. I like how everything kind of split apart, but you could follow it for the most part and that it all impacted. That was great. It's the exact opposite of what happened in The Last Jedi with the whole 
thin rose thing, which literally if you took it out, it wouldn't have mattered. That's the exact opposite of what happened, so that's cool. However, you have the other two hobbits, especially just Pippin. Man, if you didn't want to punch Pippin in the face, I seriously judge you as a human being because Pippin just, Pippin needed a good smack. Pippin didn't get as much crap as he should have in that thing. I know that whole like him holding the orb thing and him getting tortured was pretty fun to watch, but man, Pippin just kept making dumb decisions throughout. Speaking of dumb decisions, why was the main character Sam instead of Frodo? I'm not even hating the fact that Sam had to do everything and Frodo was poisoned and corrupted the whole time. I'm saying that if you flip the two, Sam would have been just as corrupted, but Frodo literally would not have been able to handle crap. Frodo was too trusting. He literally kept making bad choice after bad choice and he couldn't, he couldn't do anything. He just kept getting captured and doing wrong things and Sam kept having to save me. There were literally lines where it's just, Sam, Sam help me, Sam help me. Why don't you help yourself? Why don't you grow as a character? Why don't you just not just get corrupted the whole time and kind of just have a character arc that makes me want to like you as a person? So there was that. So if they were flipped, Sam would have done the same thing and Frodo would have sucked and they wouldn't have been able to do that. Now. Um, what is it about the, the thing with the main characters that I didn't enjoy as much? Um, it was the fact that during the battle, I never once feared for them. I knew they weren't gonna die, but maybe they could have, who knows, main characters die. But it wasn't that. Literally, no one ever stood a chance. It, there was, there was no, it, nobody was swinging at them that they could kill them. There were no cuts really being made. It was just Gimli going like this with his ax, using it like a goddamn shake weight and basically just succeeding the whole time. Legolas had infinite arrows. I don't know if that was ever explained, but man, did he have infinite arrows. And then you had Aragorn who's just like constantly being, ooh, my hair through the wind while I slash really dopely. Cool, why don't you have any like parts where they almost die? Now again, now as we're getting to side characters, Boromir, whatever. Okay, so you got Ned Stark over here, um, doing what he does best, which is dying after doing stupid shit. Cool, Ned Stark. Man, I feel bad for that actor, but he gets to play these cool things, so you got Ned Stark over there doing what he does best. Then you got Faramir, who's like, the I want my dad to love me, but my dad doesn't love me. You have Eowyn, who's like, I don't even know what her point was, but I wasn't that satisfied when she like killed the dude and had to be killed by a woman or something like that. I, I don't know. It was like, I wasn't feeling it. Maybe I gotta watch it again. I kind of forgot Gandalf because he was just too epic for his own good. I mean, you shall not pass definitely holds up. I, I was like, when he said that and I knew the line was coming, I immediately was like, yeah, this is awesome. When he was fighting the Balrog, was super into it. I think it was a Balrog. That whole thing was awesome. That whole storyline was great. Him and Saruman was great. That whole thing was awesome. Then you have Gollum over here who's just like, f I'm so glad this happened just because Andy Serkis is probably like a genius that, it, and he's not underappreciated. He's like the Lin-Manuel, Lin-Lin-Manuel Ferrer, what, what, what's his name? Lin-Lin, whatever his name is, the Hamilton guy. I, I don't know why I forgot his name. The guy who was kind of underappreciated and then he just started being really successful and now everybody's obsessed with him. That's what happened to Andy Serkis, where he just kind of realized he was a genius and then it was like, boom, I'm down. I'm so in. I'm, I'm all in on this person. So Gollum was great. I love this backstory. I love this story. I love what he was doing. The way they did the split personality was just so much fun this time. I know it's so, it's so awfully used usually, but it was just so fun the way he's talking to himself to come up with these solutions. And it's because he's like a little weird or really weird that it's just, oh, you just wanna, you just wanna call him a good boy and, and, and go about your day. So that was great. And of course, he's actually the one who saves the day, which is just hilarious. I love that he saves the day and not in like a heroic way, he saves it because he wants his precious. It's amazing, it's so good. You can't help but love it. <laughs> so amazing, what a good boy. Um, just so good. I love that he takes no pain in the lava. What a G, how do you go out like a gangster? <laughs> Also, when it comes to side characters, my favorite were by far, other than Golem, the trees. My God, everything about them. I know Gimli's voice, uh, Gimli's actor does that voice for the main tree. The trees were great. It probably made the two, the two other hobbits worthwhile because everything about them was amazing. Them trying to figure out if they're actually hobbits, their entry into the battle, even them like figuring out their friends were burned down, just like, uh, they probably had one of the best, if not the best subplots. So kudos to them to making me care about trees. Um, 
It was amazing. It was a better advertisement for climate change than anything else I've ever seen. Something I gotta say though, even though some of the dialogue was a little much, I gotta give them credit. They ended the franchise with Aragorn making one of the best lines, which is, my friends, you bow to no one. It was a pretty heavy handed line, but man did it land and it really, it really sold what the franchise was about and the whole arc of which they were going for. More movies need really awesome caps that are earned instead of just thrown in. It was earned, it was amazing, it was beautiful. Kudos to them, because just, wow. God, I gotta watch it again. We need more franchises like that though. Maybe a little bit less cheesy, maybe a little bit like, ah, you know what? I'm gonna take that back. We don't get enough cheesiness in this world. If you're gonna go cheesy, make the rest of it amazing so the cheesiness feels great. If you can make a scene like Frodo waking up in the morning and looking like, like Jesus Christ himself and all of the little hobbits coming and playing on his bed and Gandalf smiling like that uncle that you don't wanna to invite to your daughter's birthday party. You have all the other guys coming in smiling and then you got Sam and the moment Sam comes in it's like, Oh, all of that, just all of their adventure coming back to hit them in that, that erotic slap in the face that just, you know, gets them charged up and it's just amazing. If you can make that scene work, you know you did well as a franchise because wow, was that a scene. <laughs> so that's my take on the franchise. I guess I'm gonna have to watch it again. Poor me. Guess I'm gonna have to have some fun. Also, <laughs> Orlando Bloom <laughs> shooting arrows, it's just, uh, why is that everything we needed in this world?